This is the last of my forecasting uh, videos where I where I uh, go through some examples, and in this one, we're going to talk about evaluating forecasts. We're going to talk about measures of forecast error, and measures of forecast error allow us to compare different forecasting approaches. We've talked about several, and say which one of them, in hindsight, seems to be working better to give us a sense of which ones we should use in the future. So we're going to talk about bias, we're going to talk about mean absolute deviations, we're going to talk about mean absolute percentage error, and we're going to talk about mean squared error. Uh, and so all of those are different approaches to evaluating uh, to evaluating. Uh, error, forecasting error. So just to start, error is equal to sales minus the forecast. So we always start with sales and subtract the forecast. So if, uh, if sales were bigger than forecast or we under forecasted, uh, this will be a positive error. And if the error is negative, that means sales were smaller than the forecast and we have a negative error. Uh, and we have something called cumulative forecast error. And cumulative forecast error is simply the sum of all the errors. And the sum of all the errors gives us, you know, so if we are good, if we don't have any, if, we, if we're consistently on one side of, uh, if we consistently over or under forecast, the number will be further away from zero. But if we under forecast sometimes, over forecast that sometimes, we want cumulative forecast error to be close to zero. And uh, if it's positive, we're under forecasting. And if it's negative, it's over forecasting. And so cumulative forecast error is a measure of bias. It tells us whether we're consistently over forecasting or consistently under forecasting and, uh, and, and really then is one way of evaluating a forecasting, uh, a, a, a forecasting tool. Does it have bias? So let's go through a couple of examples here. So here's some data, period, doesn't matter what periodicity we have. One, two, three, four, five. Sale, actual sales are five, six, three, six, four. I'm using simple small numbers so that the, the math is easy. Forecast one. We, these are just, uh, I'm not talking about a specific approach, but this is forecast one, four, seven, three, one five and this is forecast two and it is three six four four three so we have actual sales for five periods we have forecasts that we developed and gave us forecasts in each of those five periods now we'd like to say which one of those uh, performed the best so the first thing we will do is do error one. Five minus four is one. Six minus seven is negative one. Three minus three is zero, so there was no error that time. Six minus one is five, and four minus five is negative one. Do the same thing here, error two. Five minus three is two. Six minus six is zero. 3 minus 4 is negative 1, 6 minus 4 is 2, and 4 minus 3 is 1. 
So there we've just simply calculated our errors uh, based on our two forecasts and now we're going to apply these different tools to, to decide which method we like the best. So the first one we're going to do is cumulative forecast error which is just the sum of the errors. So 1 plus negative 1 is 0 plus 0 is 0 plus 5 is 5 plus negative 1 is 4 and we do the same thing uh, and we have 4 uh, uh, in both cases. So uh, our numbers here are relatively small so to have a cumulative forecast error of 4 means both approaches are consistently under forecasting and you can see that because the numbers are generally positive so there's not one that has less bias than the other in fact we would argue in this circumstance that both approaches have some bias so let's then now turn to the different measures of evaluating forecast error and and we just need to remember those uh, forecast numbers so that we can come back and revisit them so that we have mean absolute deviations mad and essentially mad is the average that I am wrong by So it is an average of the absolute ma value, which is why it's called absolute. It is the average of the absolute value of your errors. So in this case, you don't care if you're over or under. You've used your cumulative forecast error to give you a measure of bias. In this case, you are just interested in uh, the average that you were wrong by. So I got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, in this case, I take the absolute value of each of those. This is method one, this is method two, the forecasting method. I take the absolute value. So that just means I always make it a positive number, whether it was positive or negative. So I've got one, this one was negative one, so I have a five, zero is zero. That was positive five. This one was negative one, so it's one. I just add them up, I get eight. Mad is equal to 1.6. So I'm average by what I'm I'm wrong on average by 1.6 units. So the error here was 2, 0, negative 1, so the absolute value is 1, 2, and 1. That total is 6. I divide it by 5. So the mean absolute deviations here is 1.2. Because this is the average that I'm wrong by, I prefer the low number, right? This is a case, uh, this is a case where you prefer the low number. If you think back to productivity, we preferred the high number. So based on MAD method 2 is preferred. So, pretty straightforward, you calculate your errors, you take the average of those errors, and then you compare them. The number by itself doesn't tell you a whole bunch, it is used as a benchmark against something else. So, this one is lower than that one, so we prefer that one. Let's look at the next one. Mean absolute percentage error and this is again absolute value but then we take it as a percentage that we are wrong by so if we go back to this here we are wrong our error was 1 and our actual was 5 here our error was negative 1 absolute value is 1 and our error and our sales were 6 
So what we do here is we take MAPE one, two, three, four, five, method one, method two. We have one over five is equal to 0 0.2. We have 1 over 6 is equal to 0 0.17. So you can see, in this case, we were wrong by 1 in both cases, but because the number is bigger, our percentage is smaller. Uh, and then we had 0, uh, 5 over 6 is equal to 0 0.83. And 1 over 4 is equal to 0 0.25. And we do the same thing on the other side. 2 over 5 is equal to 0 0.4, 0, 1 over 3 is equal to 0 0.33, 2 over 6 is equal to 0 0.33, and 1 over 4 is equal to 0 0.25. And again, we then just take the average and approximately 0 0.2. I've, I've done a bit of rounding there, but it... Uh, and so again, 29% and 20% method 2 is preferred. So in this case, method 2 is preferred, uh, which was the same as in the previous case. Where we would use an absolute percentage error is if we have highly variable sales. So if we're wrong by five up here and wrong by five down here, it's a bigger deal down here. So if we have a trend or if we have seasonality, then MAPE becomes a better approach because it, it, it it takes the absolute value and compares it to the actual sales if there's some variability. In this case, it didn't make a difference, but in that circumstance, uh, we would like MAPE better. The last approach we're going to cover here quickly is what's called mean, mean squared error. And mean squared error is just the average of the square of the errors. And what it does is it says that it gives you a different number than if you were looking just at the absolute deviations because it penalizes you more the more you are wrong. So if you miss by two, either positive or negatively, the squared error is four. But if you miss by 10, the squared error is 100. And so what it does is it really penalizes you for those, uh, big, for those big mistakes. So let's again go down. One, two, three, four, five. Number one, number two. And so we had one squared is one. One squared is one. Zero squared is zero. 5 squared is 25, and 1 squared is 1. We have 28 as our total. Here we had 2. 2 squared is 4. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. Four, 2 squared is 4, and 1 squared is 1. We have a total of 10. So you can see where here the error was 5. We, get, we, we really take a hit for having that bigger error uh, and in this circumstance uh, we, we, we feel that pain and so the mean squared error again which is just the average or the mean 5.6 here and 2 here 2 is again preferred to 1 So, in this circumstance, all three approaches uh, gave us uh, uh, an indication that we preferred forecasting method 2 to forecasting method 1. 
Uh, that isn't always the case, and then you would have to apply your management insight and say, well, if if mat is lower in one than the other and mean squared error is lower in the other, do I really want to be consistently wrong or do I really want to avoid those big mistakes? So you, you'll take a look. And let me just give you, to wrap up, uh, a quick example of uh, where it might be different. So here I have uh, actual 10, 20, 10, 20, so some cyclicality, forecast 1, I got 15, 15, 15, 15, forecast 2, 10, 15, 15, 10. In this circumstance, MAD is equal to 5 in both cases. Right? Here I'm wrong by 5, here I'm wrong by 5, here I'm wrong by 5, here I'm wrong by 5. Here I'm not wrong, here I'm wrong by 5, here I'm wrong by 5, here I'm wrong by 10. So in both cases the average is 5. But if you look at mean squared error, wrong by 5, 25, 25, 25, 25, mean squared error is 25. But here I'm, I'm not wrong, but here I'm wrong by 10, so that's 100. So mean squared error here is 37.5. So while on average these two approaches are the same, if you look at them from the mean squared error approach, forecast 2 is actually worse than forecast 1. So that's why we look at a number of different approaches. So looking at and evaluating forecasts, we first look at bias using cumulative forecast error, and then we do measures of error MAD, mean absolute deviations, MAPE, mean absolute percentage error, and MSE, mean squared error, and we use them all to give us a, some input into which of our forecasting approaches work best. Usually companies will use several different forecasting approaches, uh, but they will constantly evaluate to see how they're performing. That gives you a simple and quick overview of forecast error measurement.